Hello, my name is Joni Rutter, and I'm the Deputy Director at the National Center for Advancing Translational Sciences, also known as NCATS. Today, I'd like to introduce you to an exciting new program that we're launching related to COVID-19. As you well know, we're in the midst of this pandemic, and currently there are no FDA-approved treatments and no standardized way to collect real-world clinical data that could inform research and eventual clinical care practices. That's why NCATS and its partners are establishing N3C, or the National COVID-19 Cohort Collaborative. Here, speed is critical. N3C is developing the means to rapidly collect and harmonize clinical, laboratory, and diagnostic data from hospitals across the country to address not only the current and immediate needs of COVID-19, but also the long-term health consequences of COVID-19 in the population. So far, more than 20 organizations have agreed to contribute data to N3C, and the initial data has been ingested and uploaded. More data sets are coming and will be added as they go through the transfer process. N3C has some innovative and unique features, especially around the analytics framework. And what you'll see in the demonstration video gives you a first look at the types of data and analyses that users will be able to access to answer all sorts of critical questions about treatments, about risk factors, about health outcomes, and other COVID-19 related questions. So take a look. My name is Chris Shute from Johns Hopkins University, and along with Melissa Handel, I co-lead the N3C. We welcome contributions from all sites, especially the CTSA sites, where we try to make the process as easy as possible. Specifically, we'll accept data from any common data model, including OMOP, ACT, the Cornet, or Trinetics. We've worked to make the phenotyping extraction process easily done with scripts, with lightweight data quality checks, and extraction code that will transform the data into the zip files for transmission. Once we receive the data, we reconstitute it into the target data models as depicted. We've also adapted the data quality dashboard from Odyssey and merged the data quality checks from all of the data models to create an N3C specific data quality dashboard. All of the data that we learn from the dashboard will be returned to the sites to improve the process continuously with data refreshes. The reconstituted data is then moved through the Adeptia pipeline to do the formal transformation from the source data models into our target data model, which in this case is OMOP 5.3.1. At the same time, we correct data that might be incomplete in terms of LOINC codes or other content uh, that needs to be transformed into formal structures in the OMOP model. All of this work is done on the NCAT secure cloud staging area. Once we have the reconstituted data, we can then merge it into the common OMOP file master that is periodically moved into the Palantir environment. Palantir environment is on the AWS GovCloud. It is FedRAMP certified and FISMA moderate in terms of security layers and confidentiality. No data that is on the Palantir environment can be downloaded and limited data sets cannot even be viewed by individuals but only by software agents. We are now live in the Palantir environment with real-time data. As you can see, only three sites have been ingested at this time, despite 26 sites having signed the data transfer agreements. Thus, the data we're demonstrating today is relatively small. Nevertheless, this will constitute the largest collection of row-level data in the United States on COVID-level patients. That will allow unprecedented analytics, specifically machine learning, in a manner that is not possible with federated systems that are currently used in many environments. These systems are not competing, they complement each other significantly, and we believe that the contributions of machine learning from the N3C data support will enable discovery of information and knowledge not easily discovered through other mechanisms. As we move down, we can see that there are manners of being able to visualize the cohort specifically in the context of uh, bar graphs and visualizations of information that is shown in tabular renderings. We can toggle between these bar graphs to show and visualize any information that might be relevant to the investigator for a particular cohort. This is the time-space analytics associated with the limited data set that includes five-digit zip code and real date times. As you can see, as the bar graph moved, 
we can see a spread of COVID throughout the St. Louis region in this particular illustration. Each of these dots represents an aggregation of patients around a town centroid, or eventually a zip code level of information, and is connected to the underlying electronic medical record. Thus, we are able to predict uh, spread and epide epidemiologic patterns associated with electronic medical records as predictors. This illustrates the permissioning capability of the underlying Palantir environment. Each of these little boxes constitutes a data table with associated code to derive it, and the colors illustrate access privileges. On the left, we can see red data that is restricted that constitutes the raw limited data set whereas the blue data for this particular user shows what they are authorized to access downstream to avoid direct personal access of the limited data set. These are configurable, so we can see that other users have different combinations or permutations of permission and access. This would be configured depending upon the analysis that an investigator seeks to perform, and anybody can apply to become an investigator after signing the data use agreement and the code of behavior for the underlying access to the data. As you can see, some users uh, do have access to the complete data for management and maintenance purposes. This illustrates an analysis uh, on a, a small sample of data for uh, demonstration. This is ventilator uh, support requirements, and you can see that there are reasonable emerging data from this random forest analysis showing respirations, pulse oximetry, and related measures that are plausible in the context of predicting ventilator support. The underlying PCA plot does show some discrimination, even though this data set is relatively small for illustration purposes, uh, that can distinguish between groups or aggregations of patients and their risk of ventilator requirement. The ROC curve, correspondingly, while jagged, showing small numbers, is respectable, showing an ROC curve of 0 0.85. Uh, and these numbers, of course, would be greatly uh, enhanced by uh, the aggregation or the contribution of additional data sites to increase the power, precision, and capabilities of machine learning tools and resources on the N3C environment. The platform will be open to all approved users. And for more information about N3C and about how to contribute data or how to access and use the data, please go to the NCATS website, which will have the most up-to-date information. That's ncats.nih.gov slash N3C.